Welcome to Laugh Cry or Die, a comedy disability podcast hosted by me, Steve Wilbury, and Naomi Strain. Hello. We both are terrible at being alive, and we have a chat about it and have a laugh, and that's the podcast. Today we've got a special guest, Dave Batten. <laughs> Hello, how's it going? Good, so, um, good. Just for anybody listening, do you want Dave's mum? Do, do, you, do you want a real name, or do you want just Dave's mum? I think Dave's mum's great. <laughs> Dave's mum's great. <laughs> so, Dave's mum, do you want to just um explain how like our our conversation is going to work today? Absolutely. So um, with Dave's cerebral palsy, his speech is kind of a little bit difficult to understand, as you will find, um, and it's really variable day to day, hour to hour. So the way that we usually have conversations is that he will talk to someone and I will repeat what he's saying, just like a really good quiet, quiet <laughs> in the background interpreter. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of his jokes. Yeah. I've got my own interpreter because I've got my own language. Yeah. Yeah. What, if, what if you get your timing wrong and you completely ruin the joke? <laughs> well, when he does comedy, he has a slideshow saying yeah. what he's saying at the same time. Uh, not saying it, so they read read what he's saying line for line. And I'm actually hitting the slideshow so that I don't screw up his timing. Um, we've, we rehearse it. We've got it going on. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. He said it's a very rehearsed thing mm. because you don't want to be a mum screwing up. Yeah. <laughs> For anyone who's not seen Dave's comedy, like you're saying, he uses you use a slideshow and it's all very timed. But I read when you first started, you you had mum was like translating live, and I was wondering, like, was that difficult? You know, to get the timing right, or are there times when Dave's your speech is worse, so the timing goes off or stuff like that, or like what kind of problems you hit because timing is so important in comedy (laughs) i will answer that yeah thank you david um so when originally as you're saying we were typing it as it was as he was talking and um the it was still rehearsed it was still rehearsed but we also had a few Mm. uh possible replies for hecklers um which we don't have with the slideshow so at the beginning of the show we're like you can heckle each other, but you can't heckle Dave because we can't type it. Um, <laughs> we can't type our response. It'll always be back off. So, um, <laughs> so now you know you don't need to heckle, right? Yeah. yeah. But we actually was rehearsed. But what we found, so myself typed or one of David's sisters, and we found that we were so nervous because we were so proud of him and that was so exciting that we couldn't type very easily. We'd screw it up or, you know, the timing wasn't good. So... Um, we developed the idea um, in consultation with a few people that we would uh, just do line for line. So everything in his slideshow is created for the way he's delivering it. With every, you know, sometimes it's just and on the slide, or it right. might be because, and just so that that his emphasis. And I literally have to make sure that I'm hitting the next slide, kind of as he's speaking. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. That's really handy if you if you forget your material. That's really handy. <laughs> yeah. How do we even right? know you're telling these jokes, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Yeah, you're right." <laughs> I tell them not to look at the slides so they know he's not reading it. <laughs> <laughs> He's just he's just talking about his laundry, but he's ch- yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, this is yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> he's said exactly, yeah. David, do you ever <laughs> did you ever when your mum was translating for you, did you ever put stuff in there purely to make her uncomfortable? Like force her to say stuff? <laughs> oh, Absolutely. <laughs> He said, yeah, I did do do, do that, that on purpose just to piss her off. Um, and he's got a joke about that where he says, mum has to talk everything I say. And then he says, fuckity, fuckity, fuck. So, um, <laughs> 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 yeah. you're a comic to the bone, my friend. Like, it, that's pro- proper comics. That's something. That, like, yeah, if how you can, can I you really can make the person I love the most uncomfortable? Yeah, if you can yeah. call your mum during the show, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, my secret is I taught him to say fuckity, fuckity, fuck. 
Because <laughs> I told him when he was young, if he did a speech therapy, he'd say any words he liked. Have you, have you found that comedy has always been part of your relationship and in your family? They said yes, indeed, and in fact, entertainment is in our family and a big part of his life. My grandma was a ballerina. And my granddad was a musician. Yeah, and grandma owned a dance studio all of her life. She actually retired at 85. Wow. She passed away last year, unfortunately. She was one of the biggest influences of my life. We were really close. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your grandma. Yeah, so all of um all of David's siblings are like musicians or did acting or dance or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they will support you a lot, don't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he said he comes from a big, um, a big what? Yeah, family of entertainers. Yeah. yeah that's, that's really cool, man. It's, and I think like having it just in the air that that's an option growing up can be such a shaping influence. Like, you know, most people going to school and stuff, they're like, oh, you can be, you could, you could be an entertainer and, and make a living. That's an option. Isn't really covered for most families. <laughs> Dave said I was brought up believing that I could be anything I want to be. Yes. Because. Uh, <laughs> Because my mum and dad taught me how to use my mind to create whatever I want in life. Spiritual guidance. And I believe. I believe in God and I believe in spiritual guidance. I think, I think that's important to believe in. Because it's good to be, yeah, because he believe uh, could, because I believe that I can create whatever I want in life. <laughs> also, I've always been a bit of a rat bag. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because they're barking to get to him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
Can, can yeah. I just ask you, David, you know, like how everyone's real supportive and everyone's like, you can do anything, there's nothing going to hold you back. Do you ever get pissed off with that? Like, just fuck off. I just want to sit and watch you <laughs> stop making me do shit. <laughs> So just said, you know what I really hate is when people say, Oh my god, you're such an inspiration. Yeah. 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 I said, no, fucking not. (laughs) (laughs) It's like when people say to me, like, oh, you're so brave. And it's like, why? Like, it would be brave if I said to somebody else, can I have your procedures? But just having them, there was actually a comedian, I can't remember who it was, and it was it was really bad. They're saying, you know, these awards they give to, like, brave children, and there'll be a kid being attacked by a Rottweiler or something. And they're yeah. like, you will test if, that's kid, if that kid's brave is going up behind them and barking. Then we'll see how brave they are. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's not about being crazy hey. because you've got no freaking choice about it. Like exactly. it's happening to you. There's you didn't like, oh, I'm brave, so could you just fuck me up a bit? You're just like, yeah, actually, this is happening and I'm just surviving. There's that meaning of the, the daisy growing between two rocks and it's like, and it's a friend going, oh, you're spread. It's like, I'm, I just happen to be between two rocks. I that's not what I want to be talking about, you know? Yeah, it's not a path you've chosen. Yeah. Even as a parent, we yeah. get that a lot. Oh, oh you. my God, you cope so well. Actually, we're just coping. You know, mm. we don't have a choice in this. It's happened. Just the same as what. Yeah, but, yeah. And that's one reason with the podcast is because you don't often get the chance to go out in the world and go, actually, things aren't awesome. Things suck. Uh, you always have to put on that face of yeah we're we're dealing with this stuff and everything's not fine but you know we're getting on with it yeah, and it's like, yeah. we can actually go no actually it sucks it's crap yeah, right. we, can, we can still be normal people but just with everything crap around us exactly <laughs> I don't know what you see. The reality is. Yeah, the reality is that disability exists. Anyone can get a disability at any time. Yeah. You know, someone can, well, and just in the same way that you can get a break. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Some people don't. Uh, even. Uh, Some, yeah, you might get a break. Uh, uh, don't even have legs. Or arms, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, Say that again. Hey, Sometimes um, Dave thinks that people are really dumb. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, okay. <laughs> dumb. But it's, it, you're talking about that whole thing, aren't you? That, yeah, people think life's a Hollywood movie. And that's what comedy is about, eh? Breaking that, right? Yeah. For sure, because it can make it makes people really uncomfortable. Like we were saying before with the with the term like the spaz club that me and Steve created for the two of us. And it's like, I, th- I think uh, Dave wins. <laughs> like you can be crap. Yeah, no, no, no. You get you get you're like a gold card member. We're just like silver associates. <laughs> I can do a good take off. I'm gonna be in the club. Yeah, you're with the boss face. Tell it tell them about it. <laughs> 
There's a tetraplegic guy on the West Coast that Naomi's friends with. And we're like, oh, you can only move your head. You, uh, you got a, you're like gold star. Like you say, there's all in there's, and even then, you know, at least you're not living in Gaza and all these things. That, totally. that's, mm-hmm. you know? or, or being a politician. <laughs> hey, you can, you imagine, can you imagine us not living in Gaza? <laughs> Oh. Oh, I would have to carry all of you. I carry David. <laughs> <laughs> Stay there, don't get oh, you yeah. in a you'd, have to take, you'd have to take the bullet for us all. <laughs> yeah, that would be me. That would be me. Yeah, that would be me. Um, I think you should tell them about your sister, your, the two sisters down from you, who, oh. when you had tri- when they were little, because that's really funny about. About perspective. We were little. We were little. We were little. Um, they used to lie on the floor. <laughs> they used to lie on the floor with him and play cerebral palsy. <laughs> they say, let's play cerebral palsy. And, and, one, and one day, David comes out to the lounge and how old was Kiara? Uh, not even three, and um, she was in a standing frame, right? Yeah. And this just flop, flopped, flopped. Like, and, and what did you say? I said, What are you doing, honey? Yeah, no, she was being Dave. I'm just being Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> you you walk in and go like, oh no, another one of my kids is broken. <laughs> it's catching me. <laughs> I, I know you wanted to be Dave, but I have to tell you a quick story is that we were staying in a facility in Auckland while he was having hyperbaric oxygen treatment. And and so we had he was six, the next one was five, the other one was three. And we got three trial wheelchair motorized chairs for him to try out in the weekend. And meanwhile, the people that lived there had a family day. And my two other kids and David, they, they took the other two wheelchairs and were driving them around while he was in his. And I was in the accommodation. And then this woman <laughs> knocked on the door and she said to me, oh, my God, I just wanted to come and see you. I'm so sorry. You've got three disabled children. <laughs> and I was like, you're so brave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm really brave. And she's like, Two was spina bifida and one was cerebral palsy. And the guy, yeah. one that was five realized that the woman was talking to her and thought she was disabled. Oh. And, and was like horrified. She was only five. And the woman said, What disability do you have? And she said, Oh, we've got a spina bifida. So <laughs> this woman came and saw me and I was like, Oh, yeah, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> totally, so totally cashing in on the attention, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Perspective because the, the older brother, the first of our kids, you know, is disabled. They did you just, find, did you find um, David that like you're saying they're like mimicking and playing with that? But did their <laughs> did their like I don't know their development? Did they sort of follow what Dave what you what you were living like? Like following your speech. That is a good question. I suppose they did. Well, 
if you want to answer this, but just uh, you were doing the physical therapy, <laughs> speech therapy, and they got through it. <laughs> That's, yeah, Dave was doing quite a lot of um, physical therapy when he was very young. Um, he did a particular program and, did you say speech therapy? And speech therapy. Mm -hmm. And so, because they're all, the first three were really close together, they would just do the same program. Like, so we'd have, you know, because Dave couldn't, couldn't even hold his head up and we were like, well, if we could ever get his head up straight, that would help him with breathing and everything. So we were doing all the stuff that we could do. And um, so they just grew up doing physical therapy as well. <laughs> and speech therapy as well, yeah. It was like, <laughs> I, you know, it was like a combo deal, you know. Can, can I just say something that you mentioned um, previously was the hyperbaric treatment. That So my... Uh, my seizures were from getting the bends um, when I was a diver. Um, oh, really? And one of the things that, you know, they've kind of said, I, I was treated in the chamber for that, but not sufficiently, and it kind of screwed me up. Did you find the hyperbaric stuff helped? No, so, yeah. I Yeah, Jeff said I was so young, I... Uh, it's hard for him to have context. Mm -hmm. see, I believe so. Mm -hmm. The answer is yes. Um, from my perspective, um, he was six years old when he had the treatment. Um, and similarly to you, so Dave was um oxygen deprived during birth. So here's a forceps delivery where there was an um maybe oh yeah, you can say that anyway, but his um, cord, cord was clamped with the forceps and cut off his oxygen. So it's a similar thing, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely helped. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to ask, I held it in my brain for a solid four minutes and now it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I love it when that happens. Yeah. That's supposed to be no. my trick with the forgetting stuff. Like I think now, I think now I'm on my seventh concussion of the year. Like, I'm, gonna, don't make, I'm totally going to gatekeep the forgetting stuff. I'm having that. No, no, no. I am a heavy medical cannabis user. I have the short term memory of a literal goldfish. <laughs> yeah, but are you? Is that you as well, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> yeah every day yeah it's um yeah that's that's a long discussion but i remembered the thing that i was going to ask Wait, so go, go 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 maybe 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 i am the best memory person <laughs> um so with naomi and i we both were pretty much grown-ups when our world no we were grown-ups when our world came crashing down and you know we had the thing of where we thought we were going to be successful and have the car and the house and everything and have a normal job and be a, a person you know as we've been talking mm -hmm. to viewers um now obviously cerebral palsy comes from birth but w did you did you get worse as you got older was it or was there a time when you thought oh i'm gonna get better and be normal or has it always been sorry i know normal is a gated word these right. days but you know what I mean. but i'm gonna be the thing that i think i'm supposed that i think i'm supposed to be and then that process being like oh no i'm now this other thing i'm i'm dave i'm not what my vision of dave should be to be honest it's never even into my just who i am yeah, I have cerebral palsy, yep. All right. That isn't who I am. That's Dave. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's um, often the, the sort of first thing that people see. And it's like, then you're pigeonholed. That's what you are. Yeah. Don't need to achieve anything outside of that. You can just be yeah. as. And that's it. That's your achievement. Yeah. 
And that is the way that um, society happens consistently, isn't it? Um, side note, I spent a lot of time right from when he came off life support. So, of course, he's already made a, 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 an achievement because he's on life support for the first five days. Um, very good achievement, I felt. Um, <laughs> no, you didn't die, Dave. You kept breathing. <laughs> You were, you have so good at that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I spent a lot of time telling him he's perfect right from birth, like mm. just how he is. Hence the comedy, because that is kind of your mission statement. That is what? A bit of a mission. Yeah, it's a bit of a mission. Mm. But you know what? I am able to oh, deal with it. Dave said I'm able to deal with it anyway. Yeah, society. Yeah, and the humour is a really important thing in that because like one of my um, sets is all about having seizures and all about epilepsy. And when I first got on stage and start making jokes about it, like the audience are like, oh, no no, we can't laugh about this, this is so wrong. And it takes mm. a little bit of time to warm up and go, look, if I'm making jokes about it, it's fine. Come along for the journey. And you've kind of got the card to make those jokes. Like nobody else could make the jokes that you make. Mm. So if I got up on stage and started doing a set about cerebral palsy, that mm. would kind of be frowned upon. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why his first line is, I'm Dave Batten and I'm not normal. Yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the news comedy, but he's like, if not, then you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did actually watch one of your bits about that you spent some time in Australia and could people tell yeah. because of your accent. Love that. <laughs> yeah, we lived in Australia for about 10 years. Then we got our senses back. <laughs> you know, it's just what might be a weird one. As um, Dave's mum, could you tell an accent difference? Uh, like... Actually, no. He's, no. And, and when he, he carries on that joke and says, I speak a bit of Kiwi, Maori, Australian, and cerebral palsy, that's true. <laughs> It's actually kind of a cerebral palsy accent, truly. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely he's cerebral palsy. I don't I haven't found that on the map yet, but yeah. (laughs) Imagine that. Imagine if there's like a a country with all cerebral palsy. Nothing. Nothing but is that is that where we send all the people with cerebral palsy? The jokes. (laughs) They don't make a lot of things, but they're very funny. Um, <laughs> they're still breathing. Far oh. factory, terrible palsy land. Because when Naomi and I were trying to figure out like where the line is, because this is the you're actually the first proper guest that we've had. Because previously it's just been Naomi and I making each other laugh and being as sheltered as possible. And we were like, where where is the point that I'm being a dick about this? Because people are always like, oh, you can't do comedy these days. It's so, it's just so offensive. And the the thing that I came to was if you're trying to make the other person. You're frozen, Steve. Hey, there you go. You're back. Am I back? back? Okay, I'm back. All right. So what I was saying. Oh, I, and then and the note came up saying my internet connection is apparently unstable. Who would have thought? Oh, just yeah. like all the time. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Even the internet's not cerebral palsy, Casey. <laughs> um, what I was saying is, so yeah, we were trying to figure out, like, at what point, if if I make a joke about Dave having cerebral palsy, when am I being a jerk about it? And I think the the thing that I came to was, it's when you're trying to make the other person laugh. If you're trying to make yourself laugh about it, then that's not really, I don't know, nice or decent. But if you're like, I'm trying to make a joke that I know is going to make Dave laugh. I'm going to make him happy because he knows that I'm there and seeing him as a person, then that's that's what's okay. You guys agree with that? Yeah, I, I totally do. Like if um, 
it's, uh, there's some people will kind of mimic me having a seizure and like they'll see me with an injury and go like oh were you like eh, about it all and it's like when they're just <clears throat> they think they're being funny whereas steve you can because it's coming from a place of friendship and a place of love and so when you when you do it, it's like it, connecting about it not taking the piss out of me because of it it totally depends on your relationship doesn't it <clears throat> About con- it's about context, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, completely. And, like I you have the Will Smith guide. The Will Smith guide. Yeah. You know what's his name should not have made a, a joke about Will Smith's wife because it was yeah. offensive. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like I I know paramedics really well, and they know that I refer to seizures having a spaz or I'm being a spaz. And so when they come and see me and they bring me out of a seizure and they'll say, hey, it's okay, you're just having a spaz, it's fine. And because <clears> you've got <throat> that relationship, it's fine. And I'd say to them, when you go to the next patient that's having a seizure, just just okay. be careful you don't say the same thing to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you may get fired. Oh. You know, everyone files complaints these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, well you might get hit in the head and get a bad injury. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, 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 you could tell your story about how you put it on sometimes. I do. Sometimes it will. <laughs> you, you've got to play the card. <laughs> and people talk to him like he's an idiot. He showed them what you do. Yeah. It's better than an impression of an idiot. Yeah, oh, people can talk. Um, Dave, Dave um, do you mind me saying this? So in Dave's mm-hmm. company, he talk, says, you know, uh, when someone sees someone in a wheelchair, they go all weird, and he so it says a bit of stuff about that. And he and can't look you in the eyes, and he's like, I've got eyes, and looking at them won't give you cerebral palsy. <laughs> but he talks about how, um, you know, people will talk to him in that tone of a new, that you talk usually is reserved for a newborn or a cute puppy or a dog, and that's true. And they will talk to him like he's couldn't understand anything, couldn't possibly understand anything. Um, mm. And hello, like this. And so Dave likes to. That's cool. That sounds like, I, I, I yeah. wish to God people did that to me so I could do that. That sounds like so much fun. Just <laughs> winding them up, being like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> nothing going on here. <laughs> yeah, because the <laughs> best I could do. <laughs> A what? T. Oh, he's got a tip for you. He's got a tip for you. Buy a wheelchair. If you don't have one. Go out for a few laughs. Yeah, do that. See what happens. Oh my god! You know we should do? Next time, next time we're in your guys' neck of the woods, we should rent three motorized wheelchairs, and we can just all run around playing cerebral palsy. It'll be hilarious. We've only got one motorized, but we've got a couple of manuals, so just get the words. Let's go see how much free stuff we can get. But see, the thing is, if you've got the manual ones, and David, if you've got the electric one, then you're definitely going to be king of the spazzes if you can <laughs> out race <Yeah>. us. <laughs> he said he definitely wants to hire a couple more motorized chairs for when you go. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be your, everyone's mum. <laughs> you can be the carer for all of us. <laughs> Yay, live the dream. You all, I knew you always wanted more disabled kids. I could tell from <laughs> the way you look. Yeah, because those other ones turned out to be able bodied. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, quite, I quite like the first one. Right. Yeah. I, ha- I had a question about. How how important is your voice to your comedy? Because there's the guy, I think it's he just goes but like the guy who doesn't have a voice, but he's got a phone and he just plays like TikTok AI voice clips. Um, 
Is that something mm. you'd ever thought about? Or is it really important to you that you're using your voice and people are coming along with you and you're using the way that you do delivery in, in your cerebral palsy accent? Yeah, it's a good question. I've thought about it a couple of times. That just as who I am. I'd rather use my voice. Because I'm able to use it. Mm. Say that again. Oh, have you ever seen Rosie Jones? Yes. Uh, yeah, she's cool. She, um, she, 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 she gets up there. She's a bit of an inspiration. Although you were doing comedy for a long time before you ever yeah. um, yeah. Yeah, he loves her, loves her a lot, and thinks she's um, and Doug said I think she's fantastic. But you've always used your voice. You've always don't know why you would. Um, Doug said I don't know why I would use um electronics. <laughs> um, you might be mad. The reason why, because you've always wanted to be spontaneous in your work. I love the I love I the I the So, talking to people, David loves spontaneity and has always been a bit of a random person. Um, you think that, yeah, well, he thinks so. He's always been offered those electronic things right for, from young, and right from young, he's always said, nah. And he said to me, um, and obviously his speech is tricky to understand, but having a big family, he's got a lot of people to talk to, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but um, he's always said, even right at a very young age, where he could hit a thing that could say, I would like a drink. Um, and they made a thing for him to have to say I'd like an ice cream. And he said to me, um, we used to just tap out the alphabet and he would nod at the letters yeah. because before hyperbaric, he couldn't really get his voice out. Um, it was one thing that helped, um, that it helped. But he always said, when you say, I want an ice cream, today you might say, I, I'd like an ice cream, please. And tomorrow you might say, I feel like an ice cream. And so he's, David, I'm just answering for him, but you can say it after this, but it's a point about the question that you've asked, is that he's always said, you people out there walking around and talking easily do not say the same thing each time, and I don't think the same thing each time, so I want to be able to express like that. And although it's a limiting factor in some ways, it's also, it's just been really important to you, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess that's like the difference between um like you, you don't want to make things easy for those around you it's like they should listen to you it's like you shouldn't be mm. doing yourself to to make yourself accessible to other people they should get mm. over themselves and make the effort mm. That's one thing about having a two-way conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
you're actually hearing genuinely who he is as a person. <laughs> Not just um, getting to know him as someone who's stuck in the body that's limited. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Have, have you found venues or like um, promoters or whatever have asked you to do it differently? Have they said, oh, no, 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 do it electronic or? No, not, never. Awesome. That's really good. It yeah. helps that we carry our own projector and screen yeah. and laptop. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, what projector do you guys use? Because I'm, I'm, I was going to get a projector. It's an Epson. Um, <laughs> we can send you the model because I can't remember. I do. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's an excellent one anyway. The, so the two questions, one is a comment and one is a question. So one, like when you were talking about wanting to be spontaneous and using your voice, like when I'm performing, I find most often my funniest jokes are the ones I come up with when I'm in the moment being comedy Steve, you know? And so then I'll blurt out something that I hadn't written down and I'll be like, oh, that's a keeper. I'll, I'll keep it. Um, and so I can totally see why you would want to keep your voice and keep that connection between your brain and your body and your words and your, you talked about his cerebral palsy accent, you know, and that is, that's how Dave talks, that's who Dave is. And that voice is, I think, really important. As, yeah. And that's really cool that you've hung on to it like that. It's a fantastic piece of identity, I think. Yeah. <laughs> chooses to deliver it to be speaking it because he's performing it like that's a thing mm. that you didn't say that I think you should say because Dave's expressions he's got actions and expressions that we would use mm. you know and that's why he's speaking it um but he doesn't have the chance to be adding spontaneous bits in like we do in conversation because mm -hmm. it's not on the slide so it's a it's a decision that he's we've talked about all of those things he's had like a a couple of good mentors that are, are in comedy that have um you know juggled with all of that with him and he's decided that um he would rather sacrifice that being able to add in so that he can perform and, mm -hmm. and yeah 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 and I think that's important all of the ways that the people deliver it that can't speak easily is um cool though isn't it you know, yeah. it's kind of the individual that yeah well it's it's that but that's like what being like a good successful well not I don't know about successful but like um using your cerebral palsy accent um, and facial expressions and body language and that like performing in the way that you perform like everybody else does but just using your particular vehicle um and oh that was it the other question i have so then if you're performing and you're like oh i should totally do this other thing here now you just kind of have to remember it and then you make a note afterwards or <laughs> Yeah. Dave said, yeah, yeah, he did that um very much with his solo show that he did um in September, yeah, September, which was in the Disability Arts Festival, and that was he was saying that was his first ever solo show, and mm. um, yeah. he, as he was delivering, he had a matinee and an evening, and by the time he did the second show, 
a couple of days after the first one, he was like, oh, I'd like to add this in his head, you know, and he was like making notes. And the problem is, of course, the short-term memory thing. And um, and you're thinking that mm. fast in the moment. But um, you, you really do say stuff like when we are going home from a, um, a show, Dave will be saying, oh, I could do this or I pull the way home. I could have said that I can add this to that. I can add that to that. And also me, who is a minor co co writer of with his material when we're shaking it down. Um, because I owned my yeah. own dance studio and I like um I was a choreographer for my studio and I always say to him, let's choreograph that show, you know, so that yeah, it totally. lands pretty well. Yeah. And yeah. so that's you know, where I guess he's got, got a um, lot from his um, dance side of his family. But um, I think that, yeah, I think that it's always growing, isn't it? And, you, you know, it's just like for David, instead of just saying it like you do, it's just like, I've got to add that in. I've got to add that in. I'm going to tweak that. And um, I'm going to say that differently than I did at this time because I think it'll land better and, you know, so right. ever evolving thing, yeah. just like everyone else, except for that he can't do it on the spot, eh, mate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, oh, man. I, you said that you, um, you know, it was like shows that you did at the Disability Expos. Is there a big difference in the reaction between, say, an able bodied crowd and a disabled crowd? Like, do your jokes hit differently? <laughs> Definitely a bigger oh. difference they felt. Yeah. Yeah, I think it depends on the audience, he said. And the time of day. Mm. Being a 2 p.m. matinee. Firstly, not many people on a on a Saturday, um, not many people came. Mm. And the laughing wasn't very loud. Same show. 7 p.m. Friday night, hysterical laughing and a full crowd, you know, so. I suppose that's difficult as well if you've got a show that's completely bombing and you know the audience isn't on your side because you've got the slides and it's already locked in. You can't change and do a different set. You've just got to keep on doing it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why you must always find the folks mm -hmm. that are always laughed at and strategically place them throughout <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 to make sure that every now and then yeah, it's so true the comfort of knowing that someone just laughed yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was, i did i did a gig um the other week at the wakefield town hall because i'm kind of a big deal um <laughs> and uh i told this joke that did not land like the audience like smiled politely, but my friend Dave fell off his chair because he thought it was so hilarious. And I was like, cool, I, I'll take it. I'll take that one. I'll make my friend Dave laugh. <laughs> See, I had a similar thing. I, I, I did um, a set that was all about porn. And when I did yeah. it at one club, it, it was great. There were people having a good old laugh. And I, I thought, yeah, that's my set. That was really good. Did it at another night. And Steve, that was a show that you were doing as well. And I got uh. the first couple of jokes in. Mm. And the crowd was silent. And I'm like, this isn't the crowd. And I'm not very good at doing like um sort of coming up with stuff on the spot, like improv yeah. comedy isn't my thing. And it's like, I'm locked in now. So I had to do like my five, 10 minute set, cringing at how awkward it was making porn jokes. I'm like, these people hate it. And I literally crawled off the stage into the green room. <laughs> like I have failed big time. Mm. <laughs> I think yeah, have you ever bombed? But you shouldn't do porn at the at the Christian club. Just say <laughs> <laughs> no to yourself. <laughs> Dave wants to know what your joke was that you <laughs> Steve, yeah, so yeah. Not the porn. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, the, oh the joke. So um so I have a joke about medical cannabis. I say medical cannabis, I really prescribed it to myself. I was like, we for you. And I gave it to my dealer and he said, I do not need this. And I said, so, you know, medical cannabis, it has this medical use and uh, it takes my nervous system, which is screaming, goes, ah, oh, Jesus, ah, oh, and it makes my nervous system go, oh, wait, what, should, should we have an ice cream? We should have an ice cream. Uh, yeah. 
So the cannabis is really medical. The meth is more of a personal choice. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> and it was and it was that tag, the meth thing, and that was that tag that I I'd been doing that bit for ages. And the meth bit at the end, I was like, oh, I'll throw that in, and it'll be funny. Nobody <laughs> laughed except for my friend Abe, who obviously thinks me doing meth is hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, Dave's like, well, I didn't know I laughed. Yeah, must be. you just can't tell. Eh? You just can't know. Um, Dave, I think one of your risky ones is he does a whole set about um, being one of the lucky ones with cerebral palsy because he's got good hand to dick coordination. Yeah. Um, <laughs> God has a sense of humor. He can't feed himself, but he can service himself. And, um, and that goes on, like, you know, he gets his hand and he's got to wait for a seizure. I mean, no, no, he's got to wait for a twitch and he wishes, it's the only time he ever wishes for a seizure. And, you know, like, it just goes on. And I think it's quite risky. Yeah, it's quite yeah, and just... that's awesome because it does make people uncomfortable, and I, I think that's part a big part of comedy. Like we can make these jokes about ourselves, and yeah. it's kind of our normal every day. But to people who haven't got a disability or an issue, they're kind of like we shouldn't really be laughing at this, but it is funny. It's like it, it's not just laughing because oh that's a bit risque or whatever. It's like it's just funny anyway, whether you had cerebral palsy or or not. And it's like <laughs> any 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 I, I, I dare that. you to say any man sitting there with his hand on his dick going, come on, seizure, come on, seizure, <laughs> able bodied or not. That's fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. he, he, got a whole description that's gonna be the Goldilocks seizure, just just right, you know, not too hot, not too hot, blah, 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 blah. You're just gonna have to see it's coming. You've in. got to get your but, timing right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um <laughs> oh, man. That would be always terrible. comments about awareness, eh, Dave? Like someone will always come up and say after the show, oh, my God, thank you so much. I remember, like, he started doing comedy when we were living in Aussie, actually, and um, he did the biggest show he did with three other comedians. Um, his largest audience was um, 300 at an RSL. And um, <clears throat> this, so I was like, oh, my gosh, David, because he swears a lot in his um, comedy. You know, uh, well, you know, mm -hmm. he, he, it's not the regularity of it. Sorry, it's just the, the you know, the f bomb and the c bomb, and um, okay. you know, once again, don't do that at the Christian club. But um, he right. actually, uh, it was a retirement club. You know, it's the retired services club or whatever. And I was like, a lot mm -hmm. of old people, and I was like, I wonder if you should tame this up a little bit. And he's like, No, I'm not going to do mm -hmm. that. And then the MC who um, was a very well-known comedian, mm -hmm. who was the person who Dave did a comedy course with, and because he'd all, he's always been a funny guy, always. And um, she was dropping all those just in the introduction, and I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> he um, had a guy that came up to him, a lot of people come up to him and talk to him, and he had a guy that shook his hand, and I think the, the guy was probably about 70 75 and he shook his hand and he just said I just want to thank you so much actually it makes me still emotional when I think about how genuine this man was he said you just opened my eyes which is what he wants to do I will never look at a disabled person the same again you know there's someone that's, really awesome. that's really awesome and just on that with like um with the swearing um we always watch our language around old people and <laughs> Do you think that old people, they lived through the war, did they never once hear a plane go overhead and go, oh, fuck. Like, why, why are we so delicate about it? I know, it's so weird, eh? It's a very good point. Yeah, I know. And um, and Dave, you've got a funny story about your grandmother and what she, uh, thought, what she thought was, a, you know, the only swear word that she thought was polite. Yeah. Love to hear my grandma say cunt. <laughs> <laughs> She's good though. She she also <laughs> wore this <my> first bomb. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, like she's like 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 some money and we were having lunch in the pub in Cube Street and it was right next to Cosmic and on the way out Dave goes, can I go and spend my birthday with Lenny? He bought a bong and, and said, Grandma, you just bought me a bong and she's like, 
you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> She didn't know what it was. Yeah. Oh my god. She thought it was funny. I said, oh, for Jack and Jack Pants. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. I saw that in the, in the newspaper article, I had a look at that um, about you, David. Um, I saw that you're a vapor. Uh, so. Oh, good. So, yeah, actually not so much a vapor now, but oh, he does vape his weed. Yeah. He's got one of those. I have a dyna- do you use a Dynavap or a Stores and Bickle? Or are you a, what kind of vaporizer do you use? Say that again. What kind of vaporizer do you use? Sorry, I, I also use a vape and I think it's interesting to um, talk about other medical cannabis people. <laughs> That used to call, he used to use the um the um Lordis unique dry herb vaporizer. It's about that long and round. Now he uses a big expensive mother of a machine called the volcano. It's so good because David's inhaling is not easy. It's it's no one. You know what? He's done heaps of speech therapy. Get him vaping weed, and he's got his lip function is a million times better because he's really motivated to practice. Really, but this Um, is. That's a really long term game to play to be allowed to smoke weed at home. No, <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> so actually, it is my fault. So I became a natural, a, a, a holistic health practitioner because of David, because of all his health things that's what I do now and so I was into um medical marijuana before it was ever talked about very much um Mm -hmm. I did as a little course with um a company in the states of medical marijuana applications for medical marijuana um uh certification thing because I wanted all the information I could on it um well you know we was around all the time when I was younger you know like like in my young days but I wanted I was very interested in the health benefits of it before it's really come out so we used to obtain things I've made um I've made David's a lot of um um, oil products um before so I had to get myself a magic butter machine and all that stuff and make it <laughs> get it you know and like try and source good organic product that didn't have any mm. nasties like pee or something sprayed on it because mm. that wasn't the goal you know as you said that's a choice <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that, that, that's, um you didn't want to give you a brain injured son you know so yeah <laughs> I got him into it when he was younger and it was really around the seizures and um around um just his body being his his type of cerebral palsy is called athetoid cerebral palsy so it's a very wiggly uncontrolled um movements kind of a cerebral palsy which is um and fluctuating tone a little bit um different to uh basic spastic cerebral palsy um it kind of does all the things that can can happen and he's got a good joke about that (laughs) It's it's a really good joke about his um Talents, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> just kind of doing a show together now, and um, yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. So then we um got onto the cannabis clinic um more recently, and um the cannabis clinic, you know, where they'll do the prescription, and it's all above board mm-hmm. um, rather than going down to the local wherever and um, scoring, yeah, yeah. but. The thing is, it's pretty expensive. Because one of the um, the first idea, of the very, very first genesis of this podcast was Naomi can't fly. And I wanted her to try medical cannabis in Hawaii. So we were going to try to raise money to get a cruise to Hawaii so Nay could smoke weed. It didn't oh, work. Wow. 
Because we have yeah, a producer like, now. Obviously, the only solution is for me and Steve to go on a cruise, <laughs> paid for <laughs> by other people. <laughs> I feel like we might have to reenact that, re reestablish that, because um, we're going to. On one of the previous podcasts, we talked about going on spaspeditions. And it's purely a cruise yeah. ship full of spaz people, yeah. full of broken people. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> everyone's saying, everyone's mm -hmm. lying around doing their thing. <laughs> oh, I love you. Um, it's been a great conversation, though. I could hang out with you all day, I'm sure. Um, yeah. um, it has been awesome. Absolutely mm. awesome. The, the my final like wrap up thing was like we were talking about oh two two final wrap up things we we're talking about how when you're making jokes with people about you know what's appropriate and where the line is and making them laugh and stuff I think once you know somebody else has had the level of life alteringness that you've also gone through and you you know knows that kind of separation I guess then you're like oh no we're we're in the club we're in the same gang we can talk absolute drivel. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, that's how Steve and I, that's how we kind of became friends is when we realised, ah, oh, you're broken as well. <sighs> we can make those jokes and, like, you get it. You don't know each other's specific situations, but you get it. You get those limitations. And also what it doesn't limit, that other people put those limits on you. <laughs> My goal is to teach everyone about disability. Uh, yeah, just so that people that understand that disability exists. And then it's just the way it is. And they're just people, yeah. Yeah, yeah people, I, I, people spend so much time going, "Oh, it's so, it's so terrible." Oh, and oh, how do you survive? And you, you must, and you're like, "No, you just, I'm, I'm just trying to read a magazine, lady." You know, <laughs> it's. <laughs> yeah, shut up! I'm trying to enjoy my burger. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Totally. And see, I, I would love it if, um, if in the future, if you could, um, if you've got shows or anything coming up, get in touch with us so we can promote your stuff. Because it'd be awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna say as our, as our wrap up, where can we see you next day? When's your next gig or show? Or are you doing any fringe festivals? What's what's your plan? <laughs> Yeah, so Dave uh, doesn't have anything lined up at the moment. He, um, his promoter has to get her A to G, but we will definitely um, uh, have something in um, January. And um, we're waiting for the recording of Paul's Eared Up, which was his um, live show. And... Um, the, the, it's that, unfortunately the matinee recording which is where there's not many people laughing um, but but mm. yeah um, might even uh, flick you a showing of that so you get a feel for him because I'm yeah, hoping I'd love to see you might be able to take that around and do it a few times because David when he first started doing comedy he used to write a new show every bloody time and then <laughs> someone said to him you don't have to you can do that one again yeah, yeah so I'm hoping yeah. you <laughs> Yeah, it was, I did um, my first solo show was when I was touring it. And it was after like seven or eight times of like doing the show, it really bedded in and I could do the show. And then that little bit of my brain that came up with the good random stuff was much more free because it knew where the beats were, what was coming up. I'm not worried about what's going. I can just put myself on autopilot and then, like you're saying, perform the rest of it and give it the jazz hands or the yeah. spaz hands. Hey. <laughs> if you're down the area just let us know and we'll hook you up with the people there's like, some budding producers down here who are keen to get stuff in and i'm sure um i'm sure you'd go like gangbusters down here it's really easy to get press coverage as well because fuck all ever happens i 
I swear, I saw a newspaper article and it was about a time a chicken laid a giant egg. And it was that time that chicken laid that egg in the newspaper. Oh my God, no wonder you need a wig. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Dad wants to hear about that. <laughs> he said, I have to hear about that. <laughs> <The egg. laughs> it was a and newspaper art. So there's there's that, the expression that when you're in a, on a, a, a small town, the only thing you have to talk about is that time that chicken laid that egg. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. in the newspaper, there was a chicken and a dude holding quite an impressively large egg. And they had a picture of a normal egg next to it. And it was like this chicken laid this big ass egg. And it's on page two. Hang on, an egg made it onto page two. When I had my very first seizure, I wrote my car off. Yes. I made it onto page three. Yes. Like, come on. That's <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a Wellington, you can do that. Now, New Zealand's not huge, and I, the disabled comedy community is not huge. So it'd be great to, you know, build these connections. We've got a couple other people coming on. Um, and we can maybe we'll throw our own disability comedy festival with hookers and blackjack, and it'll be amazing. He said he'll practice. <laughs> he loves poker. <laughs> oh, that was so much, guys. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of our recording time today. Thank you so much for coming along, Dave. It's been great to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. It was wonderful to come on your podcast today. Thank you. Yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, hopefully we'll have you on again sometime. Thank you guys for listening. That is today's episode. We will see you all next time. Okay, awesome. bye. Bye.